Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm doing a motion tracking tutorial. Um, this is the first motion tracking tutorial that I've done on this channel, so if you guys want me to go in a little bit more depth in another video on it, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we can actually leave the base uh, default scene alone because we're not going to be using this 3D viewport just yet. Uh, we can go ahead and delete a default cube though because we are going to be using it later. But what we can do is we can go up here to this little ball and grid up here at the top left and click it and then go to video sequencer. Or not video sequencer, uh, movie clip editor. Um, so um, movie clip editor, uh, this is where we will be editing any kind of... Um, footage or anything so what we can go ahead and do is click open and then um we should be able to just open up our footage wherever it's at so this is my footage right here um it is literally just my bedroom um yeah i, I know it's a mess uh it, it's it's okay uh but um the reason i'm using this footage is because um i shot this with a phone in my room with pretty mediocre lighting so if i can motion track this footage then you can motion track pretty much anything um so this footage is a bit of a challenge and i want to uh, use it because of that um just to kind of show you how to get around some um, not so great footage so if you have better footage than this then you will be way better off than what i'm doing in this tutorial uh but anyways um to get started what we can go ahead and do is uh, right here we can notice that if we click play um, our video will play um, first off it's very slow um, so what we can go ahead and do is go back to frame zero and then go up here to the top left and click prefetch um, and then this will just uh, load our entire video into memory so that way it's not all laggy and stuff so when we play it uh, we don't have any of that like stuttering issue and all that um, so if we notice though what happens is our frames do not match the video uh, so we can see um, the video itself is actually longer than the frames so if we go ahead and click set scene frames we can see it now adjust to the actual end of our clip um, so now it's set it from 250 to 313 um, that's how long our video is in frames so that's just the set scene frames button up here at the top left um, but once we have that, we can see that our video is completely there. It is uh, loaded in. It is, you know, um, it's 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 pretty good. Um, so uh, what we can do to go ahead and start motion tracking um, is first uh, we're going first for our um, scene settings itself. Uh, we're going to change the frame rate to whatever it was shot at. So I recorded this on, on an iPhone 7, so I'm going to set the frame rate to 30, um, or I'm, I'm going to change it to 29.97. Um, that's what the iPhone 7 is shot at, uh, on its rear camera, so, uh, just make sure that matches up, otherwise your entire video is gonna be off once you render it. Um, up here we don't really have to adjust anything, uh, really just yet, um, everything here should be alright. Um, but, uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and add markers, um, to, um, our scene so the way we add markers to our scene is we control click so if you hit control on your keyboard and click you can add markers um, you can also select the markers and just delete them uh, by hitting delete or X on your keyboard but um, as far as where to place these markers what we're going to want to look for is just any kind of high contrast points on our scene so anything that um, does not look the same as things around it things that the camera can really grab onto um, we also want to make sure that these things are in frame the entire time um, because if it goes out of frame or it loses a marker, then that's not good. So we basically just want to find high contrast points. So I'd say something over here on my pillow where it goes from black to white uh, would be a pretty good place to put a marker. Um, we can also scale this marker like um, by each point or if we select it and just hit S, we can scale it um, if it needs to be a little bit bigger of an area but I think that'll be fine for now um, what we can also do is we can just scrub through it to kinda see what stays in frame so it's pretty much a lot of this middle section uh, a lot of the stuff on the sides does not stay in frame so I might add uh, let me make sure that wheel stays in frame it does uh, so I might add a marker there um, just control click on this wheel right here um, scale it up um, 
different things, um, like maybe right here on this cup. Um, over here on the t-shirt. But just place markers around in different places. And once you have all your markers down, uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and come down here to our track settings. Um, also, if you don't want to manually place these down or if where you're placing them down just isn't working out, you can go ahead and click detect features up here under marker and that will place down a bunch of trackers in your scene for you and just auto place locations that Blender decides. And then from there you can go through and clean up markers and trackers if they don't work correctly or they're not tracking right. Um, but we're, uh, for now we're just going to go with these hand placed markers. We're going to see how that works out. Um, but what we can do is if, we're, uh, if we start on frame 0 here and we have our markers selected, um, what we can go ahead and do is uh, we can go ahead and click track markers. Um, it's this little second tab. It tracks the selected markers forward for the entire clip. You can also track them by frame. You can track them backwards the entire clip or you can track them back frame by frame. But for now we're just going to track them through the entire clip. So if we just hit this we can see that if we select all of our markers um, make sure all the markers are selected and then we track them forward the entire clip we can see that our markers track through the entire clip just like this. Um, so uh, none of these tracks have been lost and they all look to be moving pretty okay. If you see a marker that is different or it is going all different places or it's just not lining up with the general motion of the other trackers, uh, you can go ahead and just delete it because it's not going to be a good track and you can add one somewhere else. But I think for right now this should be a pretty good amount. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add maybe another tracker uh, right here. Scale that up and then with that selected I can track that forward the entire clip and then we can just see yeah that one works out as well. Uh, the more trackers you add the better so try to get as much as you can. Um, I might try something right here too. Maybe this will. Nope. Uh, you can see right there that lost the track. Um, and it could lose the track for a few reasons. It could um, just kind of... It, it could The video footage could be low quality or anything really. Um, also, what we can go ahead and do is under the tracking settings, the motion, um, motion model, we can change to a fine. And that will let us... Uh, that just basically reacts with the trackers in a different way so where they can distort and skew on perspective instead of just that exact location so if you are having a little bit of trouble with markers you can change it to a fine and if we select all of our markers and track forward again um, you can't really see it here but uh, they can um, skew with perspective and stuff um, so we're gonna go ahead and set that there um, everything here we can uh, click the same um, and once we have our track, um, and once we have just some markers down and stuff, uh, for our track, what we can go ahead and do is we can go over here to the left and go into the solve tab. Um, so, uh, solve, we can go ahead and enable keyframe. Um, well, uh, what this does basically is if we have this enabled, Blender will automatically choose between keyframe A and keyframe B. And this basically... Blender auto defaults to a certain range in your video footage. Uh, I have no idea how it's selected, but it defaults to a certain range in your video footage, and it will test those keyframes for our camera solve. So um, what we can do is we can uh, try to see if Blender can do that for us, and if it doesn't and it can't, we can go ahead and change. Um, we can go ahead and change these manually. Um, also under refine, click focal length. And what we're going to go ahead and do is under our track, um, we need to change this center, center width to whatever your camera is shot, uh, whatever your camera that the footage was shot with is sensor width is. So um, easy way to do that is if you just know what camera you shot the footage with, just look up whatever camera it is sensor width. 
So if I look up iPhone 7 sensor width, um, 28 millimeters. So uh, if we set this to 28 millimeters, then uh, that basically just tells us um, what that should be. Um, focal length and everything, um, that should um, that should be okay. You can look up um, whatever camera's focal length um, and set that as well. The more accurate, um, the more accurate our focal length is, is better. The focal length is around 8.4 millimeters uh, for the iPhone 7. So I'm going to change that. To that I'm going to change the focal length to 28 um, because that is what um, the iPhone 7's camera is set to. Um, so now once we have that, we have all of this, uh, done, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and solve for our camera motion by just clicking this button right here. Um, so it'll just go ahead and select the keyframes and then it'll go through the process and then it will give us a solve error. So, uh, this solve error says 3.05 pixels and that is kind of really, really bad. So there's a few things that we can do, um, to try to fix this, um, and one of the uh, best things is to try to see if we can select some more keyframes. So if I can go for, I'm going to pick 60 to 120 to start out with. And then if we solve our camera motion again, we can see that we get a solve error down to 0.97 pixels. So that is a lot better than that 3.05 that we did get, but it is still not the best. So um, the next thing that we can do, um, next thing we can do um, is we can actually look at these uh, solve errors for this uh, for the, each of these trackers. So if you notice when we click on these trackers, we can see this average error right here, and it will give a certain amount of pixels. So uh, if we click on one of these, like if we click on this fan right here, you can see this is a very very high average error. It's 3.82 pixels. That means this tracker is not good. So we can go ahead and delete this tracker, um, and then we can just go through all our trackers and just pretty much delete any of them that are over one um, so if it's over one pixel go ahead and delete it um, and we can add some more in to replace those so um, these are looking alright um, this one I can delete as well um, and now what we can go ahead and do is we can go back to our track um, and we can add some more markers in places that might work a little bit better and that's looking alright uh, now what we can go ahead and do is we can solve the camera motion again and then we can see we get a solve error of 0.43 um, so now if we go through we can go through and kind of see what else is the highest that we have here and it's really not much honestly um, I think the biggest one is probably this one um, um, but I want to get a few more markers on the floor. So if I can kind of go back to our track, maybe put a marker here and kind of move it right here. Um, and then we track this forward and we can see if that works. Uh, because I kind of just want to get a few markers that are just on the floor. There we go for that. We're going to solve our camera one more time. And you see we get 0.48. Um, this one still has a 0.75 pixel solve, um, but we're going to leave that for now. Um, pretty much anything under 0.5 is good. Anything like 0.3 or below is very, very good. Um, but I just want a few of these trackers on the floor. This one... This one I added on frame one, that's why. I'm gonna go ahead and retract this. And then one last camera solve. And we should be all right. And all right, and so once we have our camera track, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and click set up tracking scene. Um, and once we do that, nothing really has happened here, but if we go ahead and split our viewport, I bring this up, bring this up, and change this to a uh, 3D viewport, 
we can see that it has set up a scene for us and we can see that we have all these kind of trackers down here um, if you don't see this um, then just go up here to this little ball uh, these two little balls and then just click motion tracking um, and that will enable those little empties um, and if you don't know what these empties are um, in case you can't tell these line up with all of our tracks that we have in our scene um, so for now I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to a 3d v4 just so it's a little bit easier to look at here but if we go into our camera here we can see that it's done a few things um, it has set up all this stuff up here in our hierarchy and it's set up this cube and plane here um, in our scene um, if your background is pink you might just need to play the uh, play an animation so just hit spacebar or play on the timeline and it should load your image in, into the background right here um, but what we need to do now is we need to set this plane to be our floor because that's what it's supposed to be right now But it's not where our floor is so what we can do is we can go ahead and click um, three of our um, Tracking points that are on our floor. So preferably three that are just on the floor um, here and once we have our uh, three trackers selected um, for our floor, we can go up here in orientation and select floor. Um, so you can see now our plane has come down here to the floor. Um, so what we can go ahead and do now is we can just scale this up and you can see it is now our floor. Um, so what we can go ahead and do is in our object properties, um, in a visibility this should already be a shadow catcher um, if it is not make sure this is turned on um, if we go into our render tab though we can see that that uh, what shadow catcher basically is something to catch the shadows so this plane is going to be transparent but it's going to still catch the shadows of our object um, like it's in there so what we can see now though is this cube is now in our scene it's in our video uh, and so we can now change this cube and manipulate it to however we please on this plane which is now uh, set to the pla the right place where it could be our floor so for the purpose I'm gonna delete this mesh and then um, I'm gonna add a cone you know because everybody adds a Suzanne everybody adds a Suzanne monkey to kinda show off stuff but I'm gonna add a cone because I feel like the cone is an underrepresented mesh here in the blender community but if we go ahead and add this cone and uh, this is a pretty bad shot because I have stuff everywhere in the floor but if we just kind of move this cone over, we can see that it is now there. Um, and I'm, I'm still going to move it over just a little bit like that. Um, but the thing is, is now if we play our animation, we can see that that cone stays there. Um, and that cone is just there in my scene, just doing whatever. Um, we can add a few more cones. Um, for example, if we one and one over here that was kind of like knocked over and laying on my floor like everything else in the video is we could add one right there um maybe not right there maybe right there and maybe have a smaller one right here and now if we look we can see that we now have those um objects in our scene and you can see they very well do not look like they're supposed to be there because our lighting and nothing is set correctly um, but if I kinda like did that um, and then brought the light itself up to be like directly above like where my light is And we had this here. Then we have something that looks a little bit better. Still, the lighting shadows do not match up. But um, besides that, you can see that we now have our motion tracked footage. So um, once you have your motion tracked footage, and once you have any kind of object that you would like to motion track into your scene, um, then you can go ahead and render it out and composite it together. Um, and you can do that in pretty much any kind of VFX program. You can do it in the Blender Compositor. You can do it in anything like that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much just the basic motion tracking tutorial. 
Um, if you guys want a video on how to actually composite motion tracked footage together um, or anything like that, make sure to let me know in the comments below. But uh, thanks guys so much for watching. Um, you can pretty much do anything from here. Uh, you can remodel geometry and stuff um, and get get really into complicated VFX like that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully this guy, this video was useful to at least get started with motion tracking. Um, thanks guys so much for watching. My name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.